me, you know, me, 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 Lady Lawson, my chance to be getting on the podcast, my friends, oh, my loves, uh, today's going to be a little bit different because my beloved Maddie, a uh, darling friend and co-host, is currently in America having the time of her freaking life and I miss her desperately. And so I've created some workshops to share with you that I think you would find really fucking useful. And yeah, I'm sorry, it's not going to include adorable little Maddie and our musical intros, but I hope this will suffice in the interim. In the meantime, here's this thing. Hello, hello, friends. I'm so, so excited to have you here. We are going to be going live in just a few minutes on how to grow your business, even in economic downturns. I am joined by my assistant, my right-hand girl, my favorite goblin in the world, Zeta. Um, so she'll be helping me out on this. Um, so, and we're going to be talking about how to grow your business, even in economic downturns. As always, I want to begin by acknowledging that I live and work and create on the lands of the Gubby Gubby people, and I want to pay my respects to their elders, past, present, and emerging, and because we're spread out all across the globe, I want to pay my respects to the traditional elders, uh, traditional custodians and elders of the lands and seas where you are. If you want to pop your name, the name of the traditional custodians um, of where you are in the comments, here in Australia, the First Nations people say it makes the spirits of the land happy to hear it. And it's also just an important acknowledgement to do. If you're not sure who your traditional custodians are, if you go to native-land.ca, this is world map that's being populated with them, which is just beautiful. Now, in this workshop, we're going to be talking about um, what what you need to be doing during times of economic downturn, especially when you're paralyzed in fear, ideas for reducing expenses, increasing income, the mindset, the practical, all of the things. And we're going to be doing fun prizes today as well. So if you could just share about this workshop, if you want to share, um, you know, DM a friend to get them to join, or if you want to take a picture and share it on selfie um, and tag me in it, and then just comment shared, hashtag shared in the comments. And at the end of this, my team will look through and we'll choose some winners. And you can choose from either a business goals workbook or a life goals workbook, which will be so, so fun. And if it, you know, especially if it's something that you think will be of value to, to someone, or if you know somebody who's struggling with this kind of stuff, would be interested to learn from it, please send them my way. I would love to be uh, of support and assistance and help and offer up in whatever way that I can. So if you haven't learned from me before, um, I am a multi-award winning entrepreneur. I became a self-made multi uh, self-made millionaire in my early 30s and a multi-millionaire soon after. Uh, my goals workbooks have been used by over a half a million people worldwide. Um, I have 5,000 members in my Brilliant Business Life Academy, which is where I give away all of my business building courses and programs and resources and coaching and virtual co-working space um, to help people start and grow their businesses in a really, really cost effective and generous way. So um, when it comes to talking about economic um, downturns, I want to acknowledge that like one, there's going to be so many parts where I have unearned privilege and also economic downturns affect marginalized communities even more deeply. So I want to acknowledge that first and then offer up this information and uh, hope that it helps. So where you might be feeling right now about uh, like going through an economic downturn, going through a cash crunch, going through a stage where you're feeling like uh, money is just harder to come by um, and you might be feeling paralysis. And I want you to know that you're not alone if you are feeling financial stress, because of course, there's cost of living that has gone up. Interest rates, mortgages and rents have all risen um, at a really fast rate in the in the past few years. And it's not just uh, in one location. Um, it's It's affecting a widespread part of the world. So you're definitely not alone in that. And the thing we have to acknowledge is that when your safety is under threat, you fly, 
you fight, you do the flight, fight, freeze or fawn response, depending on like your, your trauma response. And so when you um, aren't able to get your basic needs met, it's like a T-Rex is coming after you and all of the brain, all of the blood recedes from your brain and you just go into freak out mode. So when you're like looking at Abraham Maslow's hierarchy of needs, which is a very basic uh, psychology principle, like the base need to meet is physiological, which is, um, you know, food and shelter. And so when cost of living goes up and you're starting to feel like a base levels of safety aren't being met, then a whole bunch of the blood recedes um, into the reptilian part of your brain, the um, the part that is really just concerned with survival. And you can't, like, you can't get in touch with all those other parts of your brain that are problem solving and creative and innovative and coming up with solutions. So if you're feeling just in this stuck space, know that's a really, really normal physiological response for what you're going for, like the situation that you're in right now. And that it's okay, we're going to like go through this and we're going to work out solutions, but just being aware that there's nothing wrong with you. A lot of people are experiencing this. And when you feel frozen, it's because of those factors. So rest and play and self-care is paramount to getting your brain back online. And that can feel really, really hard to do if times are tough right now and you feel like the only thing you can do is buckle down um, and hustle more. And it seems counterintuitive, but it's actually more important than ever for you to make sure that you're resetting your nervous system back into rest and digest mode instead of just freak out mode. So um, building in really good boundaries around your stop work times, your rest times, having brain breaks. It's why I like doing things like reading trashy novels because having time where your brain isn't saturated with stress or money stress um, specifically will be really helpful for your nervous system to reset and for you to be able to access further parts of your brain. And also, this is not a sprint, this is a marathon. And so building in these things is really, really important to prevent burnout and to enable you to like keep reaching those, uh, accessing those parts of your brain that can help you brainstorm. So other things that can help is having loving connection, making sure you're getting hugs in wherever possible, being out in nature, baths, prioritizing sleep, limiting news and social media detox. All those things are really, really important to do. Um, I know in the US, there's like a whole bunch of stuff that's happening politically currently. Um, and like, of course, so much anxiety around that. Um, there's continuing crises happening around the world. And yes, absolutely important to be an informed citizen, but we cannot, um, like there's, there's a difference between being an informed citizen of knowing what's going on in the world and there is a difference between just doom scrolling 24-7 thinking that that is going to be helpful to you or to people around the world and to be stuck in this kind of anxiety paralysis, this freak out mode. It is not good for your nervous system and physiologically we are just not built for that whatsoever. If you think of just a hundred years ago, um, we would not have, well, even 20 years ago, our capacity to get news was so much smaller than what we have now. Even in terms of the amount of like imagery we're able to access, the amount that we dissect on it, um, and like these deep dives and how many hours we're spending consuming information, it is at a level that has never happened in history before. And we are not physiologically built in order to be able to deal with it. Consider the fact that, you know, 100 years ago, we might have been able to get one daily newspaper, um, you know, 100 or 200 years before that, you are really only hearing information from the people in your village. 
um, you know, like 200, 300 people. We weren't getting constant deluges of information of every single, like, uh, country around the world and what was happening there. And so we are, um, we aren't built to deal with the speed and the information um, that is just being kind of flooded to us right now. It floods our nervous system. And so for me, um, yes, I want to be an informed citizen of the world. And I also know through doing it the wrong ways before, well, the wrong ways for me, um, is that if I just become subsumed in anger and fear, it uh, doesn't enable me to be my best self with my family. It doesn't enable me to grow my business most effectively. And for me, it's best for me personally, if I can just create excess funds that I can then redirect to the places that need it. It's important um, to me, like when I'm to be educated, I know that just 24 seven doom scrolling does not help me. Um, and instead reading longer um, articles or books around a subject is going to give me a much deeper understanding of something without it completely like fucking up my nervous system, basically. So um, social media detoxes and limiting news are really, really important part of self-care. And asking yourself, you know, what dif what positive difference can I make and what is the best way in order for me to be able to do that? I want to acknowledge as well that um, we, stressful times, war, economic downturns, Great Depressions, they, they are not a new thing. Our ancestors have gone through wars, poverty, fam feminism, f famine, uh, racist and sexist laws, and so much more. This is a um, photograph of my beloved grandmother, Marion, and her best friend, her sister, Sally. And um, I think of what she went through, through wars, through grief, through profound loss and um, and how she was still resilient and still lovelier than ever. So we can rem use this time to access our ancestr ancestral wisdom and remember that like upturns and downturns and feast and famine, they are a normal part of the earth cycle and our, our human history as well. And um, this is a time for us to develop that resilience, develop um, those beautiful parts of ourselves. I see it as like um, being a river stone. And when you get tumbled around and all the hard bits get worn off you as you're tumbled around and uh, it polishes you and enables your inner glow to come out even more. My grandmother had gone through really horrific and difficult things and all it did was make her lovelier and more compassionate and just a beaming amount of love and joy in the world. You know, I remember my grandmother saying at one point um, she was so poor they'd gone to the city for Christmas and got there and couldn't get a hotel room and um, it was rough on the streets and she went into a police station and asked if she could please, please sleep in a jail cell for the night because she had two young children and a husband and it was the safest place for them to be. So they spent Christmas Eve in a jail cell and they made the loveliness wherever they went. Human history, like we are born to innovate and persevere and problem solve. We have survived and thrived even when things have gotten hard. Hundreds and hundreds of thousands of years of this, you have a direct uh, lineage of ancestors throughout time. Even if your, uh, like your closest ancestors are a steaming pile of garbage shit. I get that. Like there's some parts of my family that I just think, wow, I don't know what I would learn from you. But there is somebody, you have so many ancestors beyond that who have gone through so much and they have survived and thrived even when things have gotten hard. And you can call upon this perfect lineage of people who have uh, gone on to birth their children and those children gone on to create new generations for hundreds of thousands of years. What a blessing. How incredible you are, how strong you are and you have this capacity to make big miracles happen, even when times are tough. 
So times might get tough, but we are tougher. So some new perspectives. Richard Branson says, in times of recession, there are massive opportunities and fortunes to be made. Walt Disney says, I've heard there's going to be a recession and I've decided not to participate. And Eric Thomas says, I've made more than I've ever made in my life during a recession. So even when things feel harder, there is still so much incredible opportunity here. And like I'm often accused of being quite Pollyanna. Um, I even look a little bit like her sometimes. But what if this was really a wonderful, wonderful time to create new income streams, get better at marketing, improve your money systems, gain market share, serve your customers even more, pivot, innovate, create new things and develop stronger business skills. What an enormous blessing that is. When times are tight, you've got two options. You can reduce expenses or you can increase income. So let's talk about the two different ways that you can do that. And I'm just going to check our um, chat and make sure that um, it's all grooving and working. Okay, beautiful. Dawn says you have the same nose as your grandma. Thank you so much. I, I also like hope I have the level of crassness of my grandmother. When my grandmother first met my husband, she was uh, 80, I think. And um, she, we were at like this dinner, <laughs> this we're at lunch and it's just like my husband meeting my family for the first time when we started dating and she was like oh you know what I found a lovely new bra this week at the op shop and Chris is like please what and she's like oh it's black it's lacy it's so sexy actually why don't I just show you? I've got it on now. And all of us start screaming like, Grand, please, no. And she's like, ah. And she just lifts her shirt at the table and flashes everyone her brand new black lazy bra, including my husband. Um, and, you know, that's a way to initiate a, a new person <laughs> into a family. Absolutely slap in the most perfect way she was the greatest honestly <laughs> so i hope to live up, live up to her levels of pure filth and humor and joy when i'm her age and older okay somebody says hello from the ghost grannies um i love that that's your business and i love that i'm talking about my ghost granny right now like what perfect timing what absolute perfect timing Okay, so let's go through and talk about the two options to re of reducing expenses. Now, in terms of reducing expenses, it like I want to say first and foremost, like it is like there is a limit to how much you can reduce your expenses. So uh, increasing, you have to like increase your income and reduce your expenses as well. I think sometimes people reduce their expenses thinking like, oh, that's like the absolute way to go. But if those expenses give you a good return on investment um, then you, and give you more income or enable you to create more income, then that's a good expense. So we don't want to like withdraw all of our spent, like all of our expenses, especially if that's um, those things create income or give us the capacity to create more income. So when it comes to reducing your expenses, you can try doing a no spend or a low spend challenge in your life and in your business. Of course, you want to review all your expenses. You can ask for rate reductions on all your expenses as well. Review all your subscriptions. Check if you're on the right plan for those subscriptions, because even if you have like email marketing system, um, you may be on a plan that you actually don't need and you can reduce to a lower plan. You can ask your bank for an interest rate reduction or shop around. And you can also talk to a financial advisor as well. Uh, if you are in my Brilliant Business and Life Academy, I highly recommend that you take my Make Your Money Back and More challenge. It gives you the spreadsheets and tips on how to do an expenses challenge in your business and in your life. And um, people have saved tens of thousands of dollars of doing that challenge per year, which is super, super exciting. It takes you maybe an hour or two max. And um, I do it every six months still in my life and in my business, and it makes a massive difference. So it's a great opportunity to do that. 
Now, in terms of increasing your income, there is no cap to how much you can increase your income. Now, here's the thing. You can't coast in business right now. So this is where you need to double down and do marketing well. If you just started your business during like COVID times where people were spend, spend, spending um, at home, then you might just be like, oh, well, this is the normal of business. And that's not necessarily like that's not the normal of business. That was a boom time, which is very exciting. Yay, we love that. Um, but of course, like boom times, like don't just stay that way. We have those, that natural cycle of life. Um, and so this is the point where you need to double down and do marketing well. And the blessing is that it's when many people will leave the industry, but if you can hold on and build skills, you will set your company up for even more wealth in the future. And you're also setting up more long-term um, relationships with your clients as well. It's really exciting. It might be a challenge, but it's still exciting. Hooray! If you've been relying just on word of mouth only during boom times, you are going to have to sell and market and expand yourself. And that might feel scary. And that's okay. That's why my program Sales Star is there to help you. Uh, anything you can do to increase that. And think of this is not just a, like you might have feelings about like marketing is scammy or anything like that. No, like I talk about this in Sales Star, but this is an opportunity for you to step up and own your expertise, own your gifts, and find the people who need you in the world and communicate to them really, really clearly how you can help them and be of an enormous benefit to them. Like what an enormous blessing it is. I think it's such a wonderful opportunity for me to grow as a person when I am challenged to step up and be louder and prouder about who I am and communicate even more clearly for the people who are out there who need me. You may have to market more to get the dollars results that you want, but this is going to give your business momentum for future years. This is an opportunity to right size your business, improve your marketing and copywriting and start looking outside of social media marketing as well. It can be more effective than social media. That's why I have my program marketing without social media, because there are literally thousands of ways for you to market your business and um, they can often be more effective and get you more results than just spending more time on doing social media marketing. Um, I want to just remind you as well, if there's anyone that you can think of that would find this workshop helpful, please uh, share it on social or with a friend and then just comment shared, hashtag shared in the live stream. At the end of this workshop, we will look through and we will choose winners and you can choose to either get a My Brilliant Year Business Goals Workbook or a My Brilliant Year Life Goals Workbook. So when it comes to right-sizing your business, I like to talk about Pareto. So Pareto, Vilfredo, Vilfredo Pareto was an Italian engineer, economist, sociologist, philosopher, and political scientist, also an overachiever, like, dear Lord, mathematician, master of all. And Pareto made, Pareto made a really important observation. When he was looking at um, Italy, he discovered that 20% of Italy's population owned 80% of land. And of course, you know, we have to look at colonialism and colonialism and classism, racism, all of that. But it was that observation of, oh, 20% of Italy's population owned that percent. That is very strange. Uh, he then started seeing this same equation everywhere, that 80% of his peas in his garden came from 20% of his pea plants. And discovering that there are super producers in every environment, including in your own business. And you can tend to that top 20% so they grow even more. So when you're looking at your products and services, you want to look at what is making you the most amount of profit. What's the 20% of your products or services that give you that massive revenue. And you also want to look at that from a profit level as well. What's this, the, the 
things that are giving you the most amount of profit because um, even if something brings you in a lot of revenue, if the um, profit margins aren't great on that, sometimes you need to be looking at something else instead. You want to be looking at what makes the least amount of revenue and profit as well. What takes the most amount of your time? Which staff, customers, providers create the most amount of expenses or mistakes or pain for you? And which create the most amount of profit and pleasure for you as well. Getting really clear about the, that um, information is really critical at this point because then you can make such better decisions about your business and about where you want to spend more time. I talk about this a lot in my program, Work Less, Earn More, but I've created over $14 million while only working 10 hours a week. And that is because I learned about Pareto really early on, which I'm very grateful for. And I realized that like 20% of my tasks were the things that created 80% of my revenue. And so with the 80% of other tasks, a lot of that is just busy work or they might give me a minute amount of revenue. And what's much better for me is to spend my time um, investing my time in the places that give you give me that maximum amount of profit for the minimum amount of time and killing off a whole lot of the underperformers, the things that take up a huge amount of my time but don't give me profit, that don't get me the business results that I want um, and looking at the places where I do get that and be able to spend more time on that. So parading your products and services is a brilliant thing to do at this point. I also like to think about Jim Collins' hedgehog concept. Jim Collins wrote a bunch of really great books, including Good to Great. And he talks about um, working out the hedgehog in terms of what are you passionate about? What can you be the greatest at? And what drives your economic engine? And really trying to stay focused on that, that place because you could do all of the things, but to maximize profit, you want to get clear about what you're great at and spend less time in the other areas. So for me, when I've looked at my hedgehog concept in my Pareto before, um, so for example, one year, I ran retreats in my house and that was really beautiful. I got to um, meet and connect with some amazing entrepreneurs um, at that point. This is like 2012 and people are like Denise Duffield Thomas and Katrina Ruth and um, Susanna Frioni and um, Jen Wilder, Tara Bliss. So many of them like came to my house to learn, uh, learn from me and it was so beautiful to make those connections. And at the end of that year, when I looked back, it was the thing that had taken me the most amount of time and energy to do. And it had created about 10% of my revenue. And I was like, I'm really grateful I did that. And I also want to just spend more time on the things that bring me the most amount of income. And that for me is when I get to just teach online to hundreds and thousands of people at a time instead of just one to four people at a time. So being really clear about that helped me so much. It's why it's so useful in the goals workbooks to go through and do those, um, you know, where I get you to, to go through what are the products that have created the most amount of income for you and um, amount of profit as well, because it can be very illuminating to look at those numbers. You're going to find things that are outside perform, outsized performance in terms of giving you the profit. And then you're going to have some outsized performance in terms, in terms of stuff that gave you a huge amount of like stress, um, but shit all profit. So being really clear about that is very helpful. This is also a really wonderful time for you to improve your money systems and look at the data to make analytical decisions in your business. You know, for me, sometimes I rely too much on the intuition parts. And I remember um, feel like I had my academy at $99 a year and that was brilliant. And my account was like, this is like, you really need to be looking at increasing the price of that because 
your profit margins aren't as great when you're doing it like this. And I was like, no, 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 no. I don't sell as much when I do that. And he's like, you need to look at the conversion rates and actually work out the profit per customer when you're looking at that. And I did. And I realized that I had made a complete misumption with it. And I actually made a 30% increase in my revenue when I did increase prices that little bit. So looking at that kind of data to back up your decisions is really, really helpful. I also like to ask myself, like, how can I turn up and serve my current customers even more deeply and profoundly and help them for where they're at right now? That can be massive. Ask yourself, how can you stand out? How can you show up even more? This year, I decided I'd been doing my podcast for a long time in a long time in a really slapdash fashion. It was fun and enjoyable, um, but I was like, I want to turn up even more and stand out a little bit more. And so I started hiring a, a video podcast studio to um, record them in. And yes, it was way more of a production and it did have more expenses, but I was like, you know what? I'm prepared to invest in this because I feel like this has the potential to make me stand out and for me to show up even more. You don't have to go the whole hog, but just asking yourself those questions and, you know, doing a video podcast isn't the answer for everybody or anything like that. I've just noticed there's pills in this image. That is hilarious. I thought it was just going to be lollies. <laughs> <laughs> Let's just pretend it's candy. That's really funny. Um, so just doing a video podcast isn't like the answer. It's asking yourself that question. How can you stand out? How can you show up even more? How can you create more heartfelt connections? And that might be doing more in-person stuff, being on stage more, being at like markets or networking in those ways. How can you um, turn up, show up, connect even more? And what could you do to position yourself as an expert? This is a time for you to really listen more attentively to your market and what they're wanting and needing in the language that they're using so that you can use that in your copy and you can really continue to test offers and marketing messages and see what's going to work for you now and what's going to work for your people now as well. I'm just going to check over in the comments and make sure I'm not missing anything. Oh, beautiful. Thank you for everyone who's sharing. That's gorgeous. Oh, this is a beautiful quote. Kirsten says, when the wind of change comes, some people build walls, other people build windmills. <gasps> That's looking deep. That is deep. Jill says, this is very helpful. Oh, come back up here. Um, very helpful reminders. Hooray. I'm so, so grateful. I'm so grateful that it's useful. Okay. Now, um, making sure like during this time as well, that you don't just continue subsuming yourself um, in what other people are experiencing. It doesn't help for you to um, become helpless in order to empathize with other helpless people. Staying strong in your own energy of what you can do is really important. For me, I have to really protect my mindset um, and not pay a huge amount of attention to the daily news. I know what's happening on a global level, um, but I need to protect this inner peace. And I also need to protect this space inside so that I can continue to come up with solutions. So keep your mindset strong and attuned to what you want to create. I think there's also the uh, possibility, the opportunity, like when there's an economic downturn, it's like, oh, well, I'm not going to get the numbers I want in my business. Might as well not even try. And that kind of helplessness, that's an energy that you don't want to attach yourself to either. Getting to turn up every day and do your work in the world and do it with an, like as much honesty, integrity and love in your heart and strength of character, that is a big and beautiful thing. 
Make sure that you're surrounded by other people who are heading in the same direction as you, who are adopting that can-do energy. It's like in the academy, we have our virtual co-working space, and I love to go in there, especially if I'm finding it hard to get something done, because being around other people who are getting stuff done in that energy of, yes, this is possible, let's make this magic happen, it feels so much more possible than sometimes just being locked away in a room by yourself like a tiny goblin. <laughs> Ask yourself, what legacy do you want to create here? What would you do even if it was hard, even if this was going to challenge you, even this, if this was going to expand you into, have to make you expand into a bigger, bolder, braver version of yourself? What do you still want to be doing in 10, 20, 40 years' time? Do those things. And I just want to say as well, it is completely okay to pivot. And I think like a lot of people in like my online industry space, like, you know, they're like, well, you know, don't get a job. Ugh, like the, a job is the worst thing on earth. If you need to get a job in order to um, supplement your income and so you can build your business on the side, do that. That is great. I had um, a government job that I worked at for years while I started my business. I started blogging in 2004 and I didn't leave that government job until 2010. I started working part-time hours as the years went on, but I'm so grateful for the ways that it helped me to explore and try new things in my business without um, this complete freak out mode of like, oh God, I need to pay rent. Um, I get to just create a really loving relationship with myself and my business. This really is the time that we can explore our creativity, our innovation, and develop our skills. What a wonderful opportunity. Here's some side hustle ideas if this is going to get you excited. You can design and sell T-shirts on Teespring. You can sell your expertise on Clarity FM. You could become an expert on Just Answer. You could private label products and drop ship them on Amazon. You could host international students and be paid. You could become a virtual assistant. You could rent out a room, a house or tent on Airbnb. You could let people camp in your backyard or your land. You could give people lifts. You could do errands for people on Airtasker or TaskRabbit. You could do online jobs through Fiverr. You could deliver stuff for people. You could do food delivery, sell your art as prints or products. Take online surveys through Survey Junkie. You could teach courses on Udemy. You could promote business courses and software to earn cash with affiliate marketing. If you're in my academy, by the way, if you share about it with people um, who you think would be like the academy would be incredible for, if you sign up through my affiliate, free affiliate, affiliate program, I give you 50% of the enrollments. I've sent over $700,000 in cash as thank you money to our affiliates now because I so much prefer to give money to you to thank you for sharing about my work than fucking Zuckerberg. Um, so go to leonidawson.com forward slash affiliates and I'm happy to send you cash for, just for sharing about my work. I'm so grateful. You can do user testing. You can offer cleaning services. You could tutor. You can share products that you love, like thermomix, essential oils, makeup, clothes, those kinds of things. You could open a high interest savings account. You could do freelance jobs, sell thrift store, op shop finds on eBay, offer ironing services, sell handmade arts and crafts on Etsy, offer gardening services, do online transcription, use micro investing sites, do pet sitting teach ESL online, manage social media for business, start a podcast, house, farm sit, license your photos, license your artwork, run a Kickstarter, be a designer on 99designs, offer babysitting services, sell art on DeviantArt, do tasks, email marketing, sell your old smartphone or older tech and sell off extra shit around your house. Like there is so many ways that you can create abundance. You could create a book and self-publish it. You could tutor, mentor, or create a course on things you know, start a YouTube or Twitch channel, advertise for companies with a car app on websites like Carvertise. You could salvage, recon recondition, and resell furniture and cars. You could offer washing services on thelaundrylady.com.au. I use them here in Australia, and they're amazing. Um, weekly meal services. You could look at all the services under gyms.net services to give yourself an idea. 
you can do so many wonderful things and see the possibilities. And of course, if you have a business, what can you do to market your better, your business better? How can you improve and optimize your business? What can you take action on today? What can you do to get yourself out of freak out mode? Please share in the comments on the thing that you're going to take action on today. Ask yourself what's the lowest hanging fruit to make or save you money. And what would enable you to create extra income today? Sometimes you do have to do things that you don't want to do in the short, short term in order to create a better long term. And that's OK. That is normal. That is a part of human history. Surround yourself with other action takers and remind yourself that when your physiological and safety levels are threatened, it can be hard to feel unparalyzed. So take take heart with that ancestor wisdom knowing that you are big and brave and bold and that you can do this and incorporate as much self-care as you can. Now, in terms of what next, I do have a bunch of resources that can help you. Salestar is the thing to do in order to learn how to do selling, marketing and copywriting that much better. I also have a money program, Money Manifesting in Multiple Streams of Income, which will help you save money and create more streams of income and also get a whole, get over some of those money blocks you might have. Sales star also helps you get over those like feelings of like, I don't want to do marketing, it's scammy, that kind of stuff. That There's some really big, important mindset shifts for you in there as well as the practical stuff. In um, that, I also have 100 Ways to Earn Money, do the make your money back and more challenge as well. And I also have money management for your business. And all of those things, including these other ones that you might find really useful, a financial goals tracker, how to find the perfect account for you and your business, a magic manifest meditation, and Midas Touch, which is a really, really good um, program, especially if your mindset's a little bit low. That's 11 days of short meditations. And I've had just the biggest responses from people who've taken it and felt deeply touched and affected by it. So all of these courses, over $10,000 worth of courses, coaching and virtual co-working space, it's cheap as chip prices, leonidawson.com forward slash academy. I've had people say like, this has given me so much more value than most $2,000 programs out there. I just like to help as many people as possible um, for the lowest amount of price. So uh, that's how I do that and the academy. Um, and we will, if you want to, um, if you want to share about this workshop and do that now, I'll give you a couple more minutes uh, in order to do that. And then you hashtag share, shared, and then I'll get Zita to come through with, um, Zita will do a little random find of two people and we'll give those workshops as well. Um, give those, give those workbooks away. So I'm happy to answer questions as as well. So feel free to put questions in there. Um, Michelle says, very fabulous courses. Love them on my second year here. Oh, Michelle, I'm so thrilled you're here. Thank you so much. Jenny says, these are amazing programs worth so much more than the price. Oh, my goodness. I'm so grateful. Thank you. Michelle says she's going to check in with her current customers and see what else they'd like for me. Fantastic. Kirsten said she's going to start the launch for her first e-course. Yay! Dawn says, I'm going to list all of my old stamp sets on eBay. Oh, I love that. You know what? There is a really beautiful feeling to um, letting go of things that you no longer need and for them to find their new homes. And like, it just, it thrills me beyond belief. Anne says, sell some of my stuff that were projects that never got off the round or are no longer relevant. Hooray! Um can we market our business in your Facebook group or somewhere in the academy? We don't do like strict marketing, like just like a blur out. What we do instead is networking and connecting in those ways. Um, and the more you turn up and use the academy stuff, then people can find out about you in those ways. We do also have um, in the academy a thread where everyone has posted their e-courses that they've <gasps> created. So you've kind yes. of got that. 
as a way to, I guess, market and also connect and find other e-courses that you might be interested in. And then we have a similar thread for people's podcasts as well. So there are certainly ways that you can network and market within the academy. We just don't want it to become like a Facebook marketplace group, if that makes sense. You know what we should do, Zeeds? If you could like take note, thank you so much for reminding me of that. Um, would you? Would we be able to put up um, two posts in the academy? One is for people to share their social media links so that they can follow each other. And then the other is um, for people just to share about their business and what they do and where to find them. And um, we'll get those up this week. Thank you so much for asking, Kay. Uh, no, Grief Support Services who did that. Um, Renata and I started a podcast, 150 episodes, and we're up to 80,000 downloads. We're sure proud. Holy shit, that's amazing. That is brilliant. I'm so excited for you. Now, for people who want to become a, an affiliate, you just go to leonidawson.com forward slash affiliates. That's the link. Tanil says, I did shrink back because I felt bad for being positive or successful around people who are struggling. What if, what if? this was you were their inspiration and it gave them the possibility of seeing like oh there is a different way your suffering won't help their suffering you shying back won't help them and also let's let's be petty here and remember that um the straight white men of the world aren't going to stop and shrink back they're going to be like fuck yeah Look at me now. And so they're going to get more market share. Do you really want people, more people? Like, we don't need that. We need to hear from you. We need to hear from women. We need to hear from non-binary folk. We need to hear from um, people in less privileged um, conditions to share their story and be a success story and an inspiration and a possibility. Also, would it help you if I shone a little less? Would it help you if I hid because I didn't want people to know that I'm still making fucking mega bucks even in an economic downturn? That's not helpful. That's like, it, for me to like hide away isn't going to be helpful. I hope that I can be an example and for people to go like, oh, if she can, I can. Why not? Why not us? Chris says, many thanks for teaching a subject in a truthful way. When we go to the truth, we'll always, we'll always win. Yes. Yes. Thank you for everyone who shared. Okay. Laura says, I'm starting a paid newsletter. Hooray. Christy says, they're amazing programs. There's always something new. new. Amber says, great listening to you. It's always great. Tamika says, I love being in the academy. There's such a diverse range of helpful courses. Thank you. And it says, I think I'll make junk journal grab bags to let go of excess. Oh, that is a great idea. Kirsten says, agree, amazing programs. How do I share again? Um, I, If you go to leonidawson.com forward slash affiliates, you can share about my program with customers, friends, people who would find it useful. And I give you 50% of all sales that come through you. Um, and so we even have people like shared about the academy uh, over a year ago. And because like it's about 90% of our members renew. And so people renewed and they get 50% again this year. And so I sent somebody like $5,000 um, a couple of months ago and she was like, oh, I haven't shared about you in more than a year. I don't care. Thanks for like telling people about me. I'm so grateful. Um, and if you want to share in, um, just share to get the workbooks, all you have to do is um, just share a picture of this webinar and um, tag me in it or, or share about this workshop that's happening right now with a friend and then you just write hashtag shared um, and um, we'll put you in the draw and we'll draw that in a couple of minutes. Victoria Brockfield says, Leo, love you, Leonie Angel, signing up to the Academy today. Woohoo. <gasps> kisses, kisses. Zita, this is Victoria. This is the Pilates instructor I was telling you about that lives near you now and you need to start going to her. Bitch, she's the greatest. Victoria's the greatest. You will love her so much. Hello. <laughs> 
Uh, Christy says, I love getting Leone money too. I fucking love sending it out. Well, Zeta sends it all out for me, but I love sending it out. It's like, fuck yeah. Uh, all of the programs are amazing. Yay. Yay. Oh, that makes me so happy. So if you're not in the academy already, make sure you go over leonidawson.com forward slash academy. Um, Zeta says, hi, hi, Zeta. See, you guys are connected at last. Like I've told you. I'm like hassling Zeta to book in with you. Just taking a sweet ass time. Kerry says the amazing, so the Academy is so amazing as is Leone, such an incredible offer. Oh, Kezi, I love you so much. I love you. Oh, my friends. And oh my God, Victoria, you used to go to see Kerry for Reiki in person. Oh my God, we're all connected. We're all connected. We're all besties. It's all happening. It's all happening. Amber says, can you consider filming a few hours of you working so we can actually see how you do things? Um, one, you can see me in the virtual co-working space because I um, will talk about what I'm working on while I'm in there. Um, and uh, two, if you go to work less, earn more, I share about how I structure my work weeks and exactly what I do in it. I'm probably not going to do like a screen like flow of me working because that seems like it'd be really fucking boring maybe yeah um plus you're just gonna see me get distracted a lot because i've got adhd <laughs> <laughs> okay um can we post gift giveaways somewhere in the academy that might benefit other academy members for free Oh, that's a good idea. Um, would you be able to pop that on the like little post list that we'll create we'll do a little brainstorm of other um programs will you consider doing a bundle giveaway for academy members probably not because it sounds like i feel like i'd hate my life yeah i feel like i would hate my life my friend lizzie goddard does bundles um giveaways and stuff like lizzie's christmas party and i think that's amazing um i'm not even sure if she's going to keep doing them though because they seem like a massive amount of work very full-on Amber says, I haven't figured out how to get in there in the virtual co-working space. Just email us, support at leonidawson.com, and we can we can help you get in there. Laura says, what day is the co-working? Um, so firstly, it is available all the time, um, but you just need me to be a um, hosting it when I do it. So make sure that you uh, jump on like an open office hour call because I open up then for people to be able to join and get approved. Often in the Academy Facebook group as well, I will post when I'm going to join the virtual co-working space or I drop it in. We have like a little accountability chat group in the Academy Facebook group as well. So I usually drop in there when I'm going live. Um, and I've just opened it up now to go live so that you can join right now and get approved. Once you've been approved once, then um, you will be able to access 24-7. So it's just the first time for you to join that I need to be hosting. So you can join right now if you like. Um, if you want the you so if you're not sure how to do it, let me just quickly put some banners here. I've got the URL for how you can join. Show. Tinyurl.com forward slash Leone's shit room that uh, logs you into the Kajabi side and it gives you all the instructions on how to set up, including if you've got like troubleshooting issues, any or how to use the co working space. Um, and it gives you the direct link to the shit room as well, which is so fun. Okay. Um, yeah, co working is available 24 7. Um, and we like, People often use it all day as they're working and then I um, come in and out whenever I'm, <laughs> whenever I'm busy, whenever I'm, I'm needing to get some stuff done. Okay. Um, all right. Any more questions that I can help answer? Uh, we will also have this recorded and available for everyone. You're most welcome to attach. Um, uh, I love that our hair is the same colour now, Zita. Yeah, it's cute. We are the cutest. Oh, okay. That's fine. Just break. <laughs> Just break. 
It's all right. It's fine. Uh, uh, okay. So, oh, uh, people are wanting to know how to join the co-working room. So um, once you're in the academy, once you've signed up for the academy, you can, <laughs> what's the example banners? What's this? Uh, and then the URL to get into the room is tinyurl.com forward slash Leone's shit room. And I'll keep it open. Um, oh, hot tips. Um, Kylie says, I love the Biddy Tarot Talk. So we have uh, two guest experts a month at the moment teaching on a whole bunch of other, a, a whole bunch of programs. Let me show you. You know what? I should just, I'm going to share because it's actually really hard to communicate exactly how much is in the academy because we pile so much value into it. So there's always something happening every single week in the academy. And let me share my screen so you can see. Share screen. There we go. Noise. Okay. So watch this fucking video, by the way. We spent a lot of time on it. It's very professional um, and it's also very stupid and ridiculous. Uh, and it, of course, ends with me falling into the pool. Saint. Um, somebody asked, will all those extra dates, are all those extra dates in the Academy? Yes. And you can also join the Academy calendar as well. And it'll all automatically appear in your Google calendar, which is super exciting. So um, this I spent all of last week trying to make this page smaller because it's so fucking massive. It takes ages to load. Um, just because of the amount of fucking value I put in the academy. So you get Sales Star, which is four weeks. Um, and this is like a real foundational. As if you were going to just take one class in the academy, please take Sales Star. Please fucking take Sales Star. It's going to be so helpful. We've got 40 days to create and sell your e course as well. Uh, money manifesting in multiple streams of income. 40 days to a finished book, marketing without social media, work less, earn more. And that's all about uh, reducing your work hours while earning more money using Pareto principles and other hacks. Get organized, a 21 day decluttering and organizing challenge for your life and business. Midas Touch, which is really about developing um, a success mindset. And it's also just really touching. I, like I remember when my assistants were video editing it and they were all crying as they were doing it because I was so touched so that's always a nice thing to do just make your staff cry on a daily basis have no Zeta does uh just kidding <laughs> she loves me she's obsessed with oh me. Do, do we do we want to talk about <laughs> you brace me every last week <laughs> oh I thought you were going to talk about how the fact that I constantly refer to your mum's boyfriend and he, Oh, it's so unacceptable. <laughs> in a very offensive way. Oh, huh. yeah. No, anyway, I'll let everyone. <laughs> I'll let everyone assume. And I'm just. Oh yeah, like I fucked up everything last week in my attempts to um, put this, like, get this, <laughs> get this fucking page sorted. I was like, you know what? I'll clean up the database while at it. That'll make it go faster. And I wiped out eight hours of Cedar's work. Um, and she was like, I'm going to have a fucking panic attack. And I was like, it's fine. It's <laughs> fine. It's completely fine. So I'm that boss. She's so lucky to have me. She's so lucky. Uh, somebody said, please tell us more about the book course. Um, yeah, okay. It's 40 days to finish your book. And so many people get their books finished in 40 days. And um like it's it's amazing it's amazing we we literally have so many people who've written their books in that time and it's also our book marketing as well because i've my workbooks have been used by over half a million people worldwide which is really cool so i get to teach you about how to write the book in a really short period of time and then market it in really effective ways so um it's really fun ching tin says i just want to say you look so cute and positive thank you uh, yay Okay, um, more things that you get in the academy. We have how to deal with trolls and criticism, how to decide what business to do, how to find the perfect accountant for you and your business. Um, you get to do a behind the scenes of a multimillionaire's finances, including like my net worth, my current income streams, what I invest in, my retirement plan, how I track my income goals and more. That one's so much fun. Uh, and I update it as things change as well. ADHD and Autism, Business and Productivity Success. It's my latest workshop. 
We've got Cash Crunch, Monthly Group Coaching, the 24-7 Virtual Co-working Room. And then we also have, uh, you get all of my the digital copies of my goals workbooks, my daily to-do list planner, my weekly planner, the romance book that I wrote during quarantine, a calm Christmas planner, which is like 10 out of 10 fucking cute. Then you also get every single month in the academy, you get a brand new workshop from me for free. And um, so these are some of the ones that we've previously done. Set up your website that sells, decide your pricing and set up payments, how to decide what business to do, master tech for business success, Oh, we've got how to decide what business to do. See, it's which we ought to just take a note of that. I think I've messed it up in my <laughs> in all of my fixing of pages last week. <laughs> sure. Sure. <laughs> right. Why not? Add it to the fucking list. Uh, create a lead magnet, create a newsletter, two-page marketing plan, sane and profitable social media marketing, plan your 2024 business success, how to create digital art, how to create incredible customer service, money management for your business, how to grow your business with launches, how to start and grow a membership program. We just did how to win awards. Next month is how to grow your business with testimonials, then how to grow your business with networking, graphic design for your business, how to grow your business with affiliates, how to create business systems and an annual business review. And then next year we will, oh, Zita, would you be able to take note as well? We'll come up with all of our uh workshops that will release for 2025 as well <gasps> that's exciting only six months left that's exciting then you also get a new business tracker planner or spreadsheet every single month as well so yearly business growth tracker monthly and financials growth tracker annual marketing calendar launch results tracker financial goals tracker weekly content planner monthly business goals plan a weekly business plan lead magnet and webinar success tracker affiliate link tracker, content library, 52 newsletter content ideas, customer service email templates, flash sale email templates, launch success check checklist, a morning routine template, 52 live stream content ideas, which is just about to be released this week, email templates to get testimonials, 100 social media content ideas, new customer email templates, affiliate onboarding email templates, daily essential business task templates, and standard operating procedure templates as well. And then you get fucking guest expert workshops as well. So uh, we have the most amazing humans that teach in the academy as well. This is all completely free as part of your membership. We like to just be so over generous and over deliver and give you everything you need. So Tash Corbin teaches success habits for business owners. Jamila White turns does uh, turn your overwhelm into your superpower. The beautiful Kerry Rowett, who is on this call, is turn your intuition into cash. Cass Della, who is Australia's one of Australia's leading surface pattern designers, does income streams for artists. Louise O'Reilly is an incredible human and she teaches inclusion as a business asset. One of the most popular courses, and this was like hilarious and like surprising to us, but it completely makes sense. Brenda Catman's workshop, Master in Canberra Organization, is one of the most popular um, guest expert workshops we've ever had because people have like such disorganized canvas and she is really great at teaching about it. So there you go, hot tip. Piggy Makes Bank also has how to quickly create a lead magnet and funnel using PLR. Tina Tower teaches successful membership programs. Mim Jenkinson teaches how to sell more on Etsy. Lizzie Goddard taught us money making flash sales. Our beautiful friend and wise, wonderful human, Lou Neistat, teaches Law of Attraction for Entrepreneurs. Michelle Rohr teaches Publish Your Podcast in a Weekend. Lou Hamilton has Grow Your Audience with Podcast Guesting. Esther Lemons teaches How to Be an Ally to Gender Diverse Folk. Karen Parkinson has Four Keys to a Successful E-Commerce Business. Our gorgeous friend Katie Chappell does Creating Visual Notes. She does amazing live illustrations for like Apple and all kinds of shit. She's so, she's actually who taught me digital art, which is so cool. Ken Solomon teaches selling in course marketplaces. Stasha Washburn taught um, bloody brilliant business, cycle syncing for business success. Our dearly beloved friend, Tamara Protessa Adams taught how to move through creative fear and resistance. And Yini Udom taught SEO for your business. Lisa M taught teaches unconventional ways to increase your productivity. Natasha Bamblett did a really powerful uh, workshop on the power of an acknowledging country. She makes me cry every single time I hear her speak. 
Chendika has had a head at your own book. Bridget Esmond just taught Tarot for Business. We've got Own Your Uniqueness by Rebecca Saunders coming up. Natalie, Natalie Alamo is teaching Profitable Funnels. Kenny Robar, Roseby is doing How to Finish What You Start. Julie Saad, ADHD in Women. Brandy Amara Sky teaches Spiritual Business. Victoria Gibson's teaching Facebook ads that pay for themselves. Mylena Porobsky teaches a self care circle. Claire Wood teaches profit and how to analyze your money number money numbers. Sarah Parks is teaching gentle parenting, bickering siblings. Bev Roberts taught uh, grow your mailing list, and Jenny Govax is just about to teach us confidence on camera. And there is more fucking great stuff where that comes from. You are just going to get so much out of the academy. And the thing with the academy is that the vast majority of people just stay in it because they get so much value out of it. Uh, what format are the templates in? Most of them are in Google Sheets that you can um, duplicate and replicate. Well, and last year's, oh, sorry. sorry la last, all of last year's, all of the 2023 um, spreadsheets and templates are in like a Google Sheets format, but a lot of this year's are PDFs. Ah, you're right. Yeah. Yeah, the, the trackers are mostly in spreadsheets and then some are PDFs. Um, Amber says, I'm three months behind. I can't believe all the new content. You are not behind on anything. Just remember, you don't need to take all of the Academy programs in order to get value out of them. Um, all you have to do is just do one or two, whatever it is that you're needing right now, and that's you getting value out of them. The rest is just a menu. Just imagine you're at like the all-you-can-eat buffet. You don't have to like eat every single meal. Just use what is useful for right now. Kay says, congratulations to everyone. We're all winners in Leone's world. Oh, that makes me really fucking happy. Except for Cedar. <laughs> She's not. Not last week. Lisa Cedar wasn't a winner last week. Not with the amount of shit I fucked up for her. She's so lucky. That's fine. I'm still working on, like, a list of demands. for like. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. Hey, do you have your little, like, your Benoni Dawson? Oh, my God. Okay. Hold it up to the camera. I'll just, like make sure that everyone can see it nice and big i just bought this for zeta as a little present to thank her for everything and it's a dumpster on fire and, it came and she's with... called it benoni dawson <laughs> and it came with stickers the bees yeah. not the bees the bee stickers were by my draw by my housemate but um it came with like a little trash for life little nice. sticker and then Got my sticker book with me. Three other. Yeah, it does. Yeah, it does. Yeah. Um, I will I do want to say like Zeta's a kind of goblin that she doesn't know that she's gotten a pay rise, but she absolutely can be bored with just sending her weird shit. Like oh yeah. Drills her. Yeah. V very easily won over. <laughs> like there, you, you offer me a present, I'd make an excellent fay. Like, if you gave me a gift, yes, I'd be like, okay, I won't sell your children. You can keep oh. your children. You can keep them. Thank you. Thank you for the flower. <laughs> I would be an excellent fay, 100%. Just Absolutely. a spiteful little fairy living in, you know, the highlands of Ireland. Yeah. Yes. That is actually you. Actually you um amber says i just saw five courses i have to do i know there's so much in there and that's why i like to go through the sales page when we're talking about this even for members who are already in there just to go oh shit that's right that's right um also if people are confused like where are the guest expert workshops in the academy we actually ran out of academy like the kajabi space and they couldn't upgrade so what we've done is we put all of the guest expert workshops into one section that you can put them all like that you can find them all in um, and templates and spreadsheets also are in one section just so that we can continue because now we've got well over a hundred <laughs> <laughs> Zaza Kiss says the Get Shit Done room is the best. Oh, I love seeing you in there. Thank you for being in there and sharing about what you're getting done. It's so motivating. Rachel says second year in the academy. The only activations via Midas Touch alone is worth the investment. Thank you. It's like super, yeah, just the most hippie spiritual channeled work I've done in years and it was such a blessing to do it and um yeah it touched me like I was crying making them so um yeah I'm really grateful that it 
resonated so much. Oh, by the way, I just wanted to make sure that everyone saw my jumper because it's so important. Rainbow bright, rainbow bright. Okay. All right, my friends, let's leave it there. We will see you all tomorrow, same time, same place. That will be so fun. We're going to be talking about how I've sold over $12 million in e-courses. That will be so friggin' fun. In the meantime, please be gentle with you. Please create good and beautiful things. And remember that you are strong and wise and brave and bold. And you can create good and brilliant things. Yeah, and uh, I'm open to suggestions for things that Leonie can buy me. So, um, oh, that's always super kind. It's so yeah. kind. So, yeah. if you think, oh, Zeta would really like that, send it to me. Just do it. Yeah, I'll send it on. The more expensive, the better. <laughs> yes. Yeah, do it. Just like buying trash. It's so great. It's so important. <laughs> Yeah. all right friends have a beautiful day and see you all tomorrow thank you for being you and thank you for being here